Good afternoon guys, Sam from Lumtech here, here to bring you another video. Today we're going to be looking at circuits and the different, the different type of circuitry which we're going to be using in alarms. The three main configurations that we've got is uh, the first one which is single pole, the second one which is double pole and the last one which we'll use is an end of line. Okay, so what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to just quickly go over each of these and hopefully it will give you a little bit of an understanding. When we go into the panel works and the wiring, um, physical, um, in a live demonstration, obviously you'll be able to have a bit of, uh, a bit of a, an idea of, of what it looks like. So in some panels what you do is you get a double terminal like this and this, this is literally all you get. And basically what will happen is the alarm will send out one signal going down one side and it will go through, for argument's sake we'll call it um, a read switch, um, which you find in door contacts. And then what will happen is on the other side, it will then come back on the, uh, on the other cable. So when, in the previous video, we looked at the different types of cabling that we use. So we've got four, six, eight core. Um, eight cores just simply means that inside each of that that white that white cable, you've got eight different color strands. Okay, for common use, you usually use the blue and the yellow, and this will be your alarm pair. Now, now then, what's a single pole? Well, quite simple. You've got a single pair of poles. So basically, what's going to happen is uh, one end is in your alarm panel, and this end will be inside your detector. For our argument's sake, we've used a door contact. So what will happen is you'll have your yellow from one end in the panel to the other end on one side of the reed switch. And then the reed switch will then be open if the door is open and closed if the door is closed. And then what will happen is then the signal will then come back on the blue and that will come through to your alarm. If this door was closed, um, it will make a full circuit. And basically that will mean that the door is not, it's normally closed and that that will make a, a secure circuit and if it was the door was opened what would happen is you get an open circuit or a, an active zone now then a double pole is a little bit more um, complicated it's basically the same but doubled and this one will have a T the T stands for tamper and the A means alarm um, in this one you can have a, a tamper circuit um, but you won't it won't be a dedicated one like the double pole in the, this in this first one where it's a single pole the tampers will be global and basically that will mean it will need to go into your um <coughs> into your auxiliary tamper and basically that will mean that if someone's lifted the lid off the detector and it's a grade two or three contact what will happen is um you'll just get an auxiliary tamper you won't know what zone's gone off it will just be a shared tamper as i've said this one is more individual um and let me go through the same thing okay so we've got our color selected here now so what will happen is same again come out on one side go through your read switch again the door is currently open and then it will then come back on the other side and that will make your open circuit and again if this door was closed obviously then it'll be a close um, it'll be a closed circle or a secure zone but the tamper. Okay, so what we do? What do we do here? So if it's a grade one contact, um, i.e., it's got no spring, it's got nothing, it's got no anti-tamper device. The system will only be a grade one. And basically, what people do is just link it out, either here or if they link it out in the detector, they basically put the two colours together. So for our argument's sake, we'll use green as one as one side, and then we'll use this light grey as the other side. And then what will happen is in an ideal world again this should go through a, a spring basically and if the spring was to be opened the tamper would go off for zone one it's much like what happened on the zone um on a single pole but basically what you wouldn't know as i said what zone will go off it will just be a global tamper which we'll get into in a minute now then this last one which will be the one that you should use most often um and this is basically an end of line what's an end of line well it's basically you're connecting um, this together but you've got resistors as well inside of it um, what will then happen is um, it's doing all these four cables jobs but in, but in two okay so essentially what we need to do is um, <clears throat> is to draw a diagram okay so what we've got we've got the we've got the yellow again and what it's going to be doing is coming out of here or coming out 
of here depending on what panel you've got obviously for our arguments they will be using a Texacom um, this will be the same configuration okay and then from here what we'll then do we'll go through again the read switch and this read switch is again currently open okay but we need a resistor what's a resistor well okay it's basically a, um, a circuit well it's basically something that gives um, resistance on the cable so um, if you were to look when we go through the panel it's gonna be easier to describe it's a little bit of metal uh, and in, in the middle of that bit of metal is uh, is a variable um, is a variable current basically and what will happen is it adds a resistance on the cable and that's what the panel will see um, depending on on the on the state so from here we'll then have the resistor going over this and what resistor would we use well because the Texacom like to use 2k2 4k7 and by that I mean it's going to be a 2k2 secure zone or a 4 or a 4k7 and it becomes 6k9 when it goes active why because it adds the two resistors that are currently in use for Texacom uh, sorry for Galaxy it will be 1k 1k and that will have 1000 ohm resistance if the circuit is closed and 2000 ohm resistance if the circuit is open how does it know these numbers well I'm glad you asked what we do here we put a 4k7 resistor and the panel will try to go down the path of least resistance okay because it can't go through the open read switch what will happen it will sort of take the 4k7 it will take the 4k7 route okay so the alarm we currently think is in 4k but it's not coming back on this other side yet so this is the side we now need to look at so what I'll do I'll do two more cables coming up because again it can be done on either configuration either a two zone or a single pole or a double pole circuit and then what will happen is we'll then have a tamper switch okay this tamper switch will be closed hopefully um, and if this tamper switch is closed that is wonderful okay and then what will happen is it will need to go through another resistor and for this we'll call this one the 2k2 okay this 2k2 resistor will go here boom 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 and now if you can if this makes more sense to you we've got it coming out of the alarm go through either way of this either go through it if it's closed and then it has to go through the 2k2 resistor and then it will come through the tamper and then back onto your other side okay and then essentially what's happening is you're getting nothing nothing 2k2 through the tamper and then back into your panel and that is getting a 2k2 secure zone which is what the Texacom want if this was a galaxy you'd have a 1k here and if you were to have again a, tech, a uh, galaxy you'd have a 1k here and then essentially what would happen is it will come out of one side through the read switch through either the 1k or 2k2 resistor then back on the other side okay and as I said the panel will see it as a 2k2 secure because the door is closed so it's again going through the path of least resistance okay if the door is open what will happen is it will come down the A and it will have to go through the 4k7 resistor We'll then have to go through the 2k2 resistor. We'll have to then go through the tamper and then back on the other side. And those two numbers added together will make the 6k9. And this will be your active zone. Okay. And as I said, for the galaxy, it will have the 1k. If it has to go around, it'll have to be the 1k. It will have to go through that. Otherwise, um, well, it has to. And then it will come back on the other side, and that'll be your 1k, 1k resistance. Now, what is if it's a tamper? Well, I'm glad you asked because if this tamper was wasn't here, uh, or the tamper was opened, what you'd then get is a a tamper on that zone. So whether it's going to be a short circuit or an open circuit, that's what the alarm will see in because you can't. It's not going to be able to get down the other side of this. So it's going to be coming out on one side, going through here, but it doesn't matter because it can't talk to it back. Okay, so it can't send that signal back into the panel, and that will give you. Your, your reading so essentially what's going to happen is you're going to have your zone 1 for example in Tampa because it's looking for a two, either a 2k2 or a 4k7 or a 6k9 resistance but it's not getting any of that it's getting an open circuit so it knows that that zone 1 is in Tampa and this is when you'll be checking your detectors 
okay when we go into the programming of this guys when we go into a demonstration on, on the alarm it should be a bit more straightforward to follow um, but obviously these pictures are are fine I mean as I said this is gonna be your single pole so coming out on one side through your through your alarm circuit so as a, a read switch and then back on the other side for your double pole coming out much the same as this and then back on the other side but your tan pole will have its own independent and for your two cores it'll be going in and out okay now then we'll look at the daisy chains okay so what's the daisy chain basically it's gonna be one cable um, that's going to be going through several detectors okay and, and essentially all this is doing is you'll have one color coming in going through the read switch for example and then coming out on the other color oh, damn it. coming down on the other color to the next detector we'll then go same thing again And then lastly, it will come down on your final your other colour, and this will be your blue. Okay, so for this circuit to work, it, all these need to be closed, and that will be your closed circuit. If one of them goes open, obviously it can't get through here, and that will become your open circuit. Okay, so this is going to be used in your, your single pole, your double pole formation. You can't use it on your end of line, because as, as again, it needs to have that resistance to go through. Um, so obviously if you if you want to rewind that video a little bit and you'll see that obviously through the read switch it needs to have that 4k7 resistor for a Texcom for example uh, and obviously if you were to put a 4k7 resistor here 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 if they're all closed absolutely fine but if they were all to go open you would see all those you know 15,000 uh, resistance and the panel would think it's in tamper because it's it's not in the right tolerance level um, and that that's not very good is it so basically what we need to do is um, also look at the tamper situation because as I said on a single pole you'll be using a global tamper the auxiliary tamper and for this it will have the two circuits again um, so if I'm just gonna get a pen it will be a auxiliary tamper <laughs> okay and then from this what we'll have is um, a chop we'll need to use a chop block for this so it's going to come out on one side of the auxiliary tamper into a chop block and the other side will also need to be going into a chop block if you don't know what a chop block is it's a sort of plastic thing uh, which which you can put in a cable from each end um, and screw it down it will secure it for you um, they're, they're quite cheap you should have it in your tool bag uh, then essentially what will happen is from one um, detector this is again don't be your tamper so the tamper is going to come in on one and as if it's going straight through but the other side oh, but the other side well, I'm going to use red because so you can see it will be going into here okay and then from that red it will then be connected to the next detectors first one and that will be connected to your second one and this will get repeated uh, numerous times I mean as, as many circuits as you want so you, you're, you're looking at probably six or seven um, as your maximum sort of thing that's done the wrong color and then from here and then you go back out and then that'll do okay so essentially for this auxiliary tamper for it to be secure you just go out of here through this through this spring which will be here and then through this spring through this spring through this spring but if any of these are open what will happen is you'll get an open circuit and basically that means that they can't get a signal on one side so obviously if this is cut or this spring goes what will happen is that you'll try to send the signal out uh, it'll come out on this side go through this contact absolutely fine come back go into the chop block which is here and then it can't get round this part because it again this spring is open so what will happen is you'll then get an auxiliary tamper on your board a lot of ways to do this would be just to get another bit of cable um, and just loop it out which a lot of people do just put a loop of cable there 
and then it will completely bypass and obviously all you need to do is just do a, a continuity test or a um, yeah, continuity test uh, between these two, these two, these two and whenever you find that you've got an open circuit or you're not getting a continuity that's where you put the link basically um, and then some people even just do a link straight across the auxiliary tamper uh, and it basically makes the system a grade one um, which which isn't good it shouldn't be a grade one uh, yeah I say that but your insurers are probably not going to recognize it really if it's only a grade one circuit or system and it will only be the lowest of what you've currently got um, so if you're using a grade two uh, detector everywhere but one door which doesn't have a spring and it's a one it's a grade one contact your system will be a grade one unfortunately so it is something that you do need to consider um, but again it'll be down to your um, your insurers or you know your your the company that you work for but um, I mean that's me done in this video today I mean the biggest thing that we need to know is is regarding the resistors what I'll do I'll go through that again quickly just so we know so again we've got a cable coming out which will be going in to your to your contact or to your PIR um, a lot of the PIRs that you get these days are pre-resisted which basically means that all you need to do is just uh, put a jumper across and that will make it either 2K2, 4K7, 1K etc and it will be absolutely fine to use in your system um, but again we'll use a door as an example um, and I'll show you the different types of contacts you get for a door because you get flush contacts and you also get um, which ones do you know to be and it's going to be the ones that are, are um, are silver uh, the screws and the other ones are going to be like a bronze color uh, obviously it does depend on the different types of contacts that you use um, and then here we go so from here we're going to have a 4k7 resistor going around this reed switch and why is it 4k7 hmm? okay well it's because it goes through the path of less resistance so obviously if this is going to be closed it's not going to even bother going through the 4k7 it has to, it only has to go through it if this is open because it doesn't want to go into an open circuit okay and it will do we'll then have our 2k2 resistor which will pop here um, and again it needs to go through this okay it's no way it cannot go through this and again, when when we do this when we do this live, you're about to have a better understanding of, of what it all looks like. And then from here, we'll then have our spring. Um, can't really. There's nothing really much I can do as a spring. Um, so here we go. This will be our tamper spring. And then on the other side, going into the panel, um, into your other side, as I said. And essentially, what will happen is we'll come out of here. If we go, make it. If this was connected. It will then go straight through the 2K2, through the tamper spring because it's currently closed, and then into your panel, and it will be a secure 2K2 zone or 1K if it was a galaxy. If the door was currently open, or the reed switch was open, or the PIL was activated, it will then come down here, go down the 4K7, through the 2K2 because it still has to, and then through the tamper because it's still closed, and then that will give the panel the 6K9. And if your tamper spring has been activated, what will happen is it will come out of here regardless of whether the doors are open or closed so for the best example it will go down here through your closed door through your 2k2 but you can't get to your other side so the panel is looking for it but it's not getting any signal back so the panel throws up your zone one is in tamper okay um again this is going to be a lot easier to describe when we're when we're looking at the circuits and when we're looking at a few of the contacts but essentially all you need to remember is your alarm tamper uh, your alarm resistor is got over your read switch and your um your secure resistor needs to go just uh, just connecting between the alarm between the tamper basically um and then obviously it's going to go through the path of left resistance to make sure that when you do your your cabling it's not frayed so obviously make sure that this blue isn't actually um you know connected to here and your you know missing out the 2k2 because obviously then you'll only be seeing the 4k7 or a closed circuit which you don't want because it's not single pole um and that's it that's it guys i mean if you get any questions obviously leave me a comment below um again sorry about the pictures i'm using paint um it's not the best quality obviously but again uh, i'll try to write up a little bit of a description in the video um and if if you need any help um let me know i'll, I'll try my best cheers